so welcome back my dear friends now we are moving toward another important topic in head and neck that is about dural dura mater and the dural venous sinuses now this the diagram that you are able to see on the screen here it's showing like many of the dural venous sinuses there now before going to this diagram and making this diagram and all first of all let me tell you what is this dural venous sinuses here guys let's start from the scratch i hope all of you know that our brain is actually covered by three meninges the innermost one will be the pia mater then we have got the arachnoid mater then the dura mater so let's start from that scratch so imagine here this one to be your brain here guys just a rough diagram our brain is actually covered by the innermost meninge that is pia mater which is like closely adherent to the brain attached to the brain then outside that you'll be able to find the arachnoid mater here imagine this is arachnoid mater and then the outermost meninge the outermost meninge will be actually the dura mater that is dura mater now outside the dura mater you'll be able to find the cranial bones or simply we can call it as cranium so that's the arrangement there so our brain is actually covered by three meninges the pia mater arachnoid mater and the dura mater and that is actually covered by the cranium there now out of these three remember dura mater it's actually not a single layer it's actually double layered it will be having two layers now first let us try to understand what will be the name of these two layers and how to make the name i don't want you all to mug up the names in my class here so in dura mater we'll be actually having like two layers and how to remember the name of these two layers now out of these two layers the one which is on the outer side the one which is on the outer side i mean to say this layer that is just present inside the cranial bone that is just present inside the cranial bone so inside that is the reason why endo and it is bone that is why ostium endosteal layer hope you are getting me the outer layer of the dura mater it is just present inside the cranial bone and that is why this layer is known as the endosteal layer endosteal layer then what about this layer guys this layer the inner one it is towards the other meninges like your arachnoid mater and the pia mater and that's the reason why it is known as meningeal layer that is the reason why it is known as what sir meningeal layer so therefore the dura mater has got like two layers the one on the outer side is endosteal layer and the one on the inner side will be the meningeal layer guys perfect we have understood how to make the name and how to learn the name of these two layers now once you have understood about the names of these two layers of dura mater let me now show you how these two layers are actually arranged let me show you the arrangement of these two guys now for example if this is the cerebral hemisphere and we are drawing this cerebral hemisphere in coronal section we have seen this diagram a lot of times in neuroanatomy so that is cerebral hemispheres we are drawing in the coronal section now our brain is actually covered here with that bony structure which is nothing but our cranium guys this is cranium now between the brain and the cranium there will be like three meninges but i am not going to draw all the three of them let me just draw the dura mater here now in dura mater the outer one will be the endosteal layer and endosteal layer is traveling or going along with the bone it's even adherent to the bone so endosteal layer i'm just writing e here for that endosteal layer is the outer one and that is going along with the cranial bone there guys then what about the inner layer that is meningeal layer meningeal layer will also be present along with the endosteal layer only it is also be along with the endosteal layer but whenever you have a fissure in the fissure the meningeal layer will enter deep inside then take a turn and then it is going to come outside so wherever in the brain you'll be actually having the fissures in that fissure it will enter then it is again going to come out and then again it will travel along with the endosteal layer only perfect now guys don't get confused with arachnoid mater and the pia mater i did not draw the arachnoid mater and the pia mater over here these are only the two layers that is endosteal layer and the meningeal layer of dura mater so there is no arachnoid no pia just to clarify it's only the two layers of dura mater now because of this type of arrangement observe carefully there guys you are able to find some space here there is some space formed there now this space is actually known as what sinus and that is the space which is actually going to collect the blood drain the blood and we all know the blood which is actually drained will be the venous blood it can't be arterial hai na so that is the reason why because it is venous blood it is known as the venous sinus and that venous sinus is formed between the two layers of dura mater that's the reason why it is known as dural 
dural venous sinus hope you have understood the entire name word by word that's what i want in my class all my students who are listening to me right now i want you all to understand the meaning word by word dural because it is two layers of dura matter venous draining the blood and sinus it's a space which is actually draining the blood there guys that's the concept there that is why it is known as dural venous sinus now how many dural venous sinuses do we have here remember there are totally 23 dural venous sinuses there will be totally 23 dural venous sinuses and out of that 8 will be paired sinuses so totally 16 and then 7 will be unpaired sinuses guys so 16 plus 7 totally 23 dural venous sinuses do we, we do have guys now all this let me show you first of all in a picture here and then later on we'll actually even draw that one also guys wow look at this beautiful diagram here on the screen here and in this you are able to see the dural venous sinuses now first of all let us try to understand in this picture here guys and after that i'll actually you know make you draw this diagram also so that everything becomes easier for us okay now in this diagram we are able to see here first of all you'll be actually having dural venous sinus exactly in the center of the body here exactly in the center and that is known as the sagittal sinus but we are actually having two of them one will be superior another one will be inferior let me just mark here in this diagram i hope you are able to appreciate here this one will be the superior sagittal sinus here and just below that you will be able to appreciate one more and that will be the inferior sagittal sinus here guys that's inferior sagittal sinus and these two are actually in connection with the straight sinus here so that will be the straight sinus there guys okay so first you try to understand this one they're exactly in the center that is why the name is sagittal sinus and one is above superior sagittal sinus one is below inferior sagittal sinus now let us, let us try to see where exactly they are like i will show you like one more diagram so that the orientation will be much more clear to you so if you observe now this diagram I hope you all have learned about the dural folds, the folds of the dura mater like fox cerebri, fox cerebelli, tentorium cerebelli and all those. And in the middle here, we are able to see here, this one will be actually the fox cerebri. That dural fold is referred to as your fox cerebri. That is between the two cerebral hemispheres. The right and left cerebral hemispheres will be actually having the fox cerebri. Now suppose if this is the fox cerebri, if my hand is fox cerebri, in the upper border of that, you'll be able to find the superior cerebral sinus and in the lower border of that, you'll be able to appreciate the inferior cerebral sinus. Okay. So above, you'll be able to find the superior sagittal sinus over here. And below here, this one will be the inferior sagittal sinus in the lower border of that. And these two are, are communicating here with the straight sinus, with the straight sinus. I hope this is giving like much more clear picture regarding these two sinuses. Now, once you are clear with these two sinuses here, we are also able to see like one more sinus, you know, combining here at this point and this one coming from below here. This one will be the occipital sinus. I hope it is automatically getting in your mind. Oh, oh, it means that all the sinuses are actually meeting over at that point and that point is actually referred to as your confluence of sinuses here behind. Confluence of sinuses. Now, after that, once the blood is reaching here, it has to go away from there. And now it is going away from there with the help of the transverse sinus and that transverse sinus will be taking a turn, sigmoid sinus. Okay. So, this one here, you can clearly appreciate guys. This one will be the transverse sinus taking the blood away from there and then the transverse sinus is going to take a turn here that is your sigmoid sinus and this sigmoid sinus is going to combine along with inferior petrosal sinus here sigmoid sinus combines along with inferior petrosal sinus which is actually draining the blood from cavernous sinus here don't worry about that i will tell you or i'll teach you in detail about the cavernous sinus for now please focus on sigmoid sinus combining with inferior petrosal sinus and these two will combine together to form your important vein here. This one will be the internal jugular vein. That's the internal jugular vein. This is how it is formed here, guys. Beautiful conceptual in this diagram here. Now, once you have understood all the names here and their location in this diagram, let us try to draw this diagram here, guys. There are so many questions asked from this. So, let us not take a risk here. Let us draw this diagram. For example, if this one will be the superior cerebral sinus, and this one here will be the inferior sagittal sinus and they are communicating together with the straight sinus and one more from where we are receiving the blood is occipital sinus from below superior sagittal 
sinus and the one below in the lower border of far cerebri inferior sagittal sinus and this one here will be the straight sinus straight sinus and from below here this will be the occipital sinus without any doubt occipital sinus and you can clearly appreciate there in our diagram here all the sinuses are actually converging at this point here so therefore it is referred to as confluence confluence of sinuses that is confluence of sinuses here and then once you have understood about the confluence of sinuses then what should happen guys once the blood is coming here all that blood has to actually drain away from there so let us try to understand this diagram a little bit in 3d here so that is actually in sagittal section and now i am trying to draw in the transverse section here so the blood will be carried away from here with the help of transverse sinus and then that is going to take a turn sigmoid sinus combining with the inferior petrosal to become the jugular vein so let's write down the name together this one will be the transverse sinus this one here will be the sigmoid sinus and this is going to combine along with inferior inferior petrosal sinus and finally these two will combine together to form your internal jugular vein extremely important sigmoid sinus and the inferior petrosal sinus will combine together to form internal jugular vein so exactly the same diagram which i have shown you over there we have drawn here guys perfectly done now after drawing the entire diagram and seeing the important uh, dural venous sinuses over here now let us see what are the important mcqs which are possible here guys mcqs important here now in this first of all uh, this inferior petrosal sinus and sigmoid sinus they are going to exit out of the cranium via foramen now what is the name of this foramen and again it is jugular foramen here guys it is jugular foramen so those two the inferior petrosal sinus and sigmoid sinus are going to exit out of the cranium via jugular foramen and after coming out those two will combine together to form internal jugular vein is it okay so in short what i am trying to teach you here is that yes already they have been like you know tested in the exam okay what are the structures which are going to pass through this jugular foramen uh, if you go back and refer to my topic of cranial foramens we have got like many many cranial foramens over there like foramen oval foramen spinosum and so many of them out of all that cranial foramen one of the foramen is jugular foramen and there in that topic we have learned even the cranial nerve number 9 as well as 10 as well as 11 the cranial nerve number 9 10 11 are passing through jugular foramen and now you can add to that one even the inferior petrosal sinus as well as sigmoid sinus will also pass through the jugular foramen so along with that cranial nerves even the inferior petrosal as well as sigmoid sinus is also passing through jugular foramen one important mcq crystal clear here next another important mcq here whenever you are learning about any vein always you have to be perfect with the formation of the vein how the vein is forming so in this diagram we can see here internal jugular vein now how is this internal jugular vein forming guys it's formed by the inferior petrosal sinus combining along with the sigmoid sinus there is another important question here the formation of internal jugular vein i repeat for the last time it is formed by the union of inferior petrosal sinus along with the sigmoid sinus here perfect now there is one more mcq which is possible here guys which has been already asked in the exam this straight sinus is actually the continuation of a vein here the straight sinus is a continuation of a vein here now what is the name of this vein here that it will be the great cerebral vein great cerebral vein also known as the vein of galen okay so i'll just put that star mark over here now remember the great cerebral vein or else it is also known as the vein of galen vein of galen that's the one which will continue as straight sinus it continues as straight sinus even that is also important for your radiology also you can compare our anatomy with radiology so the vein of galen or the great cerebral vein continues as your straight sinus there guys perfectly done so these are all the important points that you have to know here now after knowing all these things over here guys the last and final thing that we have to do out of all out of all this dural venous sinuses the only one sinus that we have to learn in detail will be the cavernous sinus 
So after this, let's go and study about the cavernous sinus right now, sir. Now let us continue with the cavernous sinus. So out of all the dural venous sinuses, the only one we have to study in detail, guys, that is our cavernous sinus. Now first thing, guys, uh, try to understand or uh, try to remember, okay, cavernous sinus is a paired sinus or unpaired sinus? Remember, cavernous sinus is actually a paired sinus. Now if it is paired sinus, then what is the location of the cavernous sinus? Remember, it will be located on either side of body of sphenoid bone. So cavernous sinus is actually present on either side of the body of the sphenoid bones, on either side of the body of the sphenoid bone. Now better we'll do one thing here first of all, before uh, you know writing all the relations of that and whatever important points that we have to learn regarding cavernous sinus, we'll actually draw one diagram. Diagram makes the things easier guys. And that too, to observe this cavernous sinus, what we are going to do is, we are going to draw the diagram in coronal section, in coronal section here guys. So let me cut it like this here, remove everything and then let's look from the front here. So in the coronal section, when you look here, first of all, this will be the sphenoid bone here. In fact, this is the body of the sphenoid bone guys. Now what is the reason why I am drawing the sphenoid bone in this manner here? I hope you people have learned about the paranasal air sinuses. Para means around, nasal nose. So around the nose, you'll be actually having bones which are filled with air sinuses inside. Paranasal air sinuses. Okay. So around the nose here, paranasal air sinuses. Like which bones are those guys? One will be your frontal, frontal air sinus. Then there'll be maxillary air sinus. And deep inside, will be having ethmoidal and even sphenoidal air sinus. And that is the reason why I'm drawing the body of the sphenoid in this manner. You are able to appreciate the air sinus there. So this will be the body of sphenoid bone. That is the body of sphenoid bone and you can see the air sinus inside that one. Why? Because we are drawing the diagram in coronal section, don't forget that. And then imagine this one here to be your cranium. So this is actually in coronal section here sir, that is your cranium. Now in the middle of that, my dear friends, you will be actually having your brain situated there, but we are not going to draw the brain here, otherwise the diagram will become like more complicated. So better we'll do one thing, we'll just draw what is required, dura matter. Dura matter, the outer layer of that will be the endosteal layer, just inside the bone will be having endosteal. Now this endosteal layer is going to come along with the cranial bone and then here, this is how it is going to travel, perfect. Now what is the layer present on the inner side? On the inner side, it will be having meningeal layer. Meningeal layer is also present along with the endosteal layer only, but this will actually separate apart here. Okay, this is just a schematic diagram for the sake of understanding. Now between that endosteal layer, the outer endosteal layer and the inner one, the meningeal layer, I hope you are able to appreciate there is a space formed here. And this space will be actually the dural venous sinus. It is the one which is actually draining the venous blood, you know, dural venous sinus. And out of all the 23 dural venous sinus, this one will be the cavernous sinus here, guys. That is your cavernous sinus. And I have drawn that only on one side of the body of the sphenoid bone. You can imagine exactly on the other side. That is the reason why I told you cavernous sinus will be a paired sinus. I hope it is crystal clear concept here. It is a paired sinus on either side of the body of the sphenoid bone. Now, what else do we have to remember here? What are the important points to be remembered here? Now in this cavernous sinus, my dear doctors, this one here will be actually the roof and then you have got the floor and this will be the medial wall here or the medial side and this will be the lateral wall, the lateral side of the cavernous sinus. The roof, the floor, the medial wall and the lateral wall. Now passing through the lateral wall, you will be actually having the cranial nerve number 3. Cranial nerve number 3 passes through the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus and then you also have the cranial nerve number 4, that is trochlear nerve. It is also passing through the lateral wall. And not only that, you also have cranial nerve number 5-1. And 5-1 is nothing but the ophthalmic nerve. Let me just write down here, guys. So cranial nerve number 3, the cranial nerve number 4, and cranial nerve number 5, 5-1. Only the first branch, ophthalmic nerve of trigeminal will be passing from here. Now, I want to clarify one important update here, guys. Previously, when we used to study in the previous edition of Gray's Anatomy, it was given that lateral wall, from the lateral wall, cranial nerve number 3, 4, 5, 1, as well as 5, 2 is also passing. That was in the previous edition. But now, this latest update here, guys, nowadays, in the latest edition of the Gray's Anatomy, 41st edition of the Gray's Anatomy, remember, 
the cranial nerve number 5 2 is not passing it has been clearly given in the Gray's anatomy guys okay so 5 2 is not going to pass so still in many of your mcq books and at many places you'll be able to see even 5 2 is passing it's not yet updated in those books guys so remember from the Gray's anatomy yes 5 2 is not passing through the lateral wall that is one of the latest update so make a note of this one here passing through lateral wall of cavernous sinus so what are the structures which are going to pass through the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus cranial nerve number 3 cranial nerve number 4 and the cranial nerve number 5 1 they are the one which are passing through the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus then apart from this one more important thing what is going to pass inside the cavernous sinus inside the cavernous sinus you will be able to find one important artery that is your internal carotid artery I hope you remember the course of that internal carotid artery we have discussed already in the neuroanatomy part the internal carotid artery will be entering from the foramen lacerum the upper part of that one upper part of the foramen lacerum and then through the cavernous sinus then it will be taking a bend and it will be even seen above this one also guys the internal carotid artery will be taking a loop or a bend and then we will also be able to see in the roof I mean to say above the cavernous sinus also it will take a bend there and I hope you know the physiological importance of that one uh, because the blood is pumped directly into the carotid artery and uh, that pressure has to be actually you know broken down there the pressure has to be subsided so that is the reason why in that internal carotid artery there will be a loop and that loop or bent will make sure like uh, the pressure will be actually decreased over there guys now along with the internal carotid artery there will be even a nerve present inside the cavernous sinus and that nerve will be the cranial nerve number 6 that is your abducens nerve wow so it makes easy for me to now remember in the lateral wall you'll be having like 3 4 and 5 1 and inside you'll be having the 6 3 4 5 6 that's in order but that's that makes a very important mcq here write down so what are the structures passing inside the cavernous sinus inside the cavernous sinus we'll be having internal carotid artery and as well as the cranial nerve number 6 that is abducens nerve so structures passing through the lateral wall and the structures passing inside the cavernous sinus extremely important guys done